and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Americans playing in major European leagues is nothing new. In the past, players like Tim Howard, Landon Donovan, Michael Bradley, and Clint Dempsey have all made an impression. However, at times, American players have had a somewhat unfair reputation as solely hardworking players but lacking technical skill in comparison to their counterparts. As a result, they didn't tend to make it to the very top teams, and often when they did make the move to a major league, it was later on in their career. However, there is a new generation, a crop of young Americans who seem destined to change the perception of American players. They are spearheaded by the likes of Weston McKinney, Gio Reyna, Serginho Dest, and Christian Pulisic. All are highly technical and at elite European clubs, and the US looks set to continue producing more of these talents. But what exactly has changed in America to make this possible? Let's take a closer look. The first factor is the steady growth of the sport in North America. When asked about the recent crop of young players, Gio Reyna said, I think it has just been a growth of the sport in America. More and more kids are playing it, and the overall growth of the sport in America is leading to more and more players coming out. The number of high school participants has been steadily on the rise from 640,000 in 2003 to 850 in 2019. And more participants means a larger talent pool to pick from. However, this hasn't necessarily translated in increased in-person attendance, with the average number staying pretty steady between 14 and 18,000. However, the MLS has become increasingly commercialized as more and more people tune into the games from home helped by consistently signing big-name players like Rooney and Ibrahimovic. And this, of course, has a knock-on effect on the revenue generated by the league with more sponsorships and subscriptions. As Paxton Pomichol of FC Dallas says, When you're a kid, you grow up and want to make a lot of money. 15 years ago, you couldn't do that here, playing football in the States. And now, you can. And this makes sense. In prior years, as a talented young athlete in America, there were several major sports you could pursue, such as baseball, basketball, American football, in addition to regular football. The monetary rewards in the other sports were enormous, whereas an MLS salary would be enough to live on for the duration of your 10 to 15 year career, but after retirement they may not be enough to live on. The increased league revenue has helped to counter this, with the mean yearly MLS salary rising from 100,000 in 07 to 400,000 in 2019. And the discussion around money has often brought criticism around the football system in America. Unlike most football systems in the world, where training at a young age is either free or the fee is minimal, America's pay-to-play model can make the sport unaffordable from those from a lower income background. Membership to an academy can cost between two and five thousand a year, and that's before including registration fees, another three hundred to six hundred dollars a year, tournament fees, another hundred dollars a year, and separate gym memberships as well. In addition, in a country as big as America, at times, players have to cover their own transportation costs. But there is a reason for this. Unlike every other continent, America didn't take part in FIFA's training and solidarity compensation scheme. Simply put, training compensation is a fee that must be paid to all clubs that contributed to a player's academy training between the ages of 12 and 21 when the player registers with another club internationally. The table below shows how much clubs part of different footballing bodies would have to pay per year. So if player A has been developed by three clubs in Africa before transferring to Chelsea, who is a part of UEFA, Chelsea, a category 1 club, would have to pay each team 90,000 euros times the number of years they spent there. Further to this are solidarity payments which occur when a player is transferred between different jurisdictions and is usually 5% of the transfer fees. So, if player A then moves to Atletico Madrid for 20 million euros, 5% or a million euros would then be split evenly amongst the clubs who developed him depending on how much time he spent there. This money can then be used to pay coaches, buy equipment and more which will therefore keep participation costs low. But as America didn't participate in this scheme, developing clubs are entitled to none of this. The best example of this is Christian Pulisic, who was primarily developed by PA Classics. 
When he moved from Dortmund to Chelsea for $72 million, they would have been entitled to $550,000, but instead, they got nothing. The two major negatives of this are that owners are less willing to pour money into academies that they may not benefit from, and academies therefore have to use a pay-to-play model to stay in business. So, with academies not being viable for some, they look to use the college system, where a potential player will attend college, playing against other college teams before being recruited into the MLS. But this is ineffective for a few reasons. Compare a 20-year-old football player in America using this system and a typical English 20-year-old. The American plays against other college prospects, whereas the Englishman may already be playing in the league or, worst case scenario, playing against other full-time prospects in the under-23 league. The American may be limited to training after classes for a short period of time compared to the English full-time player. The American using the college system may have to wait until 24 when they graduate to then join the MLS, but the English academy system means that from 16 they're eligible. But things are changing. In April 2019, the MLS confirmed it would begin complying with FIFA's regulations, which means academies will start being compensated, which would therefore increase the incentive for investment. And when asked about the recent explosion of talent, US men's national team manager Behalter said, It's a direct result of two things. The first thing would be the creation of the Development Academy by US Soccer, which created a platform for the best teams to play against the best. They started about 14 years ago. And the second thing is the investment from MLS owners in youth development. The Development Academy has played a huge role. It is a league that was formed in 2007 with the aim to produce more quality players. Founded in 07, it is no coincidence that almost exactly 10 years later, all this talent came through. The Development Academy first aimed to bring up the coaching to a standardized level by providing them with adequate resources and education, and it was hoped by doing this, they would then provide all players with a higher level of coaching. In addition, clubs wishing to join would have to meet a minimum standard in terms of their facilities and level of coaching, and this forced many to raise their level. It would also be able to refer prospective players to the best academies in their region, where they could then receive high-quality coaching. But most importantly, the league allows players to face high-quality competition from early on, as the best young players join the academies who are a part of the Development Academy League and take part in a season-long competition within their respective regions. This is then topped off by the summer showcases, where the best teams from each region engage in a playoff which helps to find the best players whilst crowning a champion. A few of the notable graduates include Matt Miazga, Aaron Johansson, DeAndre Yedlin, and Christian Pulisic. And it is notable that so many of their best young talents have chosen the Bundesliga for a few reasons. The first reason is, it is a league that is known for producing the best young players in the world, so following success is never a bad idea. But the Bundesliga is also unable to compete with, for example, the Premier League on a financial level, so they have to be more savvy with their recruitment, looking for untapped markets like America where they can send their scouts. And the fact that America wasn't part of the training compensation scheme may have exacerbated this as they could now sign several players at virtually no cost and try them out, so to speak. And there's a reason the Premier League can't compete in this market. In general, it is much more difficult for non-Europeans to get work permits in the UK, with strict requirements over minimum wages, international appearances and more, ensuring that only established players can join. Germany, on the other hand, is much more lenient with this, with no rules on minimum wages, and international appearances, in addition to having a large English-speaking contingent making settling here much more easier than in other leagues. A perfect example of this is Christian Pulisic, who signed for Dortmund at just 16. It would have been exceedingly difficult for him to obtain an English work permit due to his age, having no senior appearances and no international caps. He did, however, join Dortmund on the other hand fairly easily. But once he was established with international and senior appearances, as well as easily demanding more than the minimum salary, he could then make the move to the Premier League. All of this means Americans have found the perfect home in the Bundesliga, and it is a trend set to continue, with the likes of Tyler Adams and Gio Reyna emerging. 
And back home in America, one thing to note is that the US Soccer Development Academy has been shut down in light of the recent global events. However, this may actually work out for the better as the MLS is set to fill the hole, making graduation from academy to first team even more seamless and making fixtures across the map much easier to make. With a population as big as America, it is almost impossible for them not to become a major player in the world of football. We have seen a few false stones before, but the current crop have several players who can compete against the best in the world on a Champions League level, which means this may truly be the start of the American Revolution. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash footballmadesimple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. I'd like to give a special shout out to Jack Brain for supporting me on Patreon and helping to make this video possible. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.